Leaders of Qatar, Egypt, and the United States have invited Israel and Hamas to resume ceasefire talks on August 15th as regional tension grows amid an anticipated retaliatory strike over Israel's assassination of Hamas and Hezbollah officials. While the world watches what appears to be a struggle for peace, the bloodshed continues. Fifteen more lives lost, thirty more injured as Israeli forces strike at the heart of Gaza. The death toll rises. Over 40,000 Palestinians killed, 91,222 wounded, as the war drags on. On October 7th, 1,139 Israelis were killed, more than 200 taken captive. Is this consequence just the chaos of war, or is it a prelude to something ancient, something apocalyptic? Could these so-called peace talks be merely the opening act of a prophecy that dates back to the dawn of time? Is the world being prepared for the final battle between the forces of Gog and Magog, a clash foretold in sacred texts for centuries? The answer might be closer than we think, hidden in plain sight. Let's take a look at Gog and Magog in the Old Testament. The word Gog is often interpreted as a title, something similar to Pharaoh or Czar. In the Old Testament, Gog is a mysterious leader from the land of Magog, mentioned in Ezekiel's prophecies. He's depicted as leading a massive army against Israel in the latter days, only to be dramatically defeated by divine intervention by none other than God himself. On the other hand, Magog is mentioned as one of Noah's grandsons in Genesis 10, Tantern 2. His descendants are believed to have settled in regions far to the north of Israel, possibly in parts of Europe and northern Asia. Magog often refers to these northern territories and their inhabitants, who are sometimes considered formidable warriors. But the New Testament mentions Gog and Magog, but in a slightly different context. In Revelation 20, 7-10, after the thousand-year reign of Christ, Satan is released from his prison and gathers nations from the four corners of the earth, including Gog and Magog, for a final battle against God's people. This apocalyptic confrontation ends with fire coming down from heaven to consume them, and Satan is thrown into the lake of fire. Gog and Magog symbolize the ultimate enemies of God's kingdom, representing all forces of evil aligned against divine authority. For many evangelical Christians, the events in Israel are not just political, but deeply tied to their religious beliefs about the end times. According to this view, followers see the return of Jews to Israel as a precursor to the second coming of Christ, influencing their political stance and support for Israel. Think about it. Protestant theologians and figures like William Blackstone have shown a long-standing effort to align political actions with religious prophecies. This has led to significant political lobbying and support for Israel from evangelical groups, especially from the Republican Party in the States. To give a little historical context, back in 1891, William Blackstone, a staunch Christian Zionist, drafted a petition to President Benjamin Harrison. This petition, signed by influential figures like J.P. Morgan and John D. Rockefeller Sr., called for the restoration of the Jewish people to their ancestral homeland. This plea came against the backdrop of brutal pogroms in Russia, highlighting the urgent need for a haven for Jews. Although President Harrison did not act on the petition, the Christian Zionists remained vigilant, interpreting global events as signs of divine intervention. The Balfour Declaration of 1917 in which the British government supported the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people, in Palestine, was seen by evangelicals as a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. The interwar years saw these beliefs persist, and the establishment of the modern state of Israel in 1948 was celebrated by evangelicals as a monumental event. Pastor Jerry Falwell famously declared May 14, 1948, as the second most important date after the birth of Christ. Israel's victory in the Six-Day War of 1967 
further solidified evangelical confidence that Israel was God's timepiece, ticking towards the end times. According to prophecy, Israel's final victory and the rebuilding of the Temple of Jerusalem would precede the arrival of the Antichrist and the Tribulation, a period of immense suffering before the return of Jesus. By the 1970s and 80s, prominent evangelicals, including Falwell, began visiting Israel, forging strong ties with Israeli leaders. Prime Minister Menachem Begin recognized the growing influence of the religious right in American politics and sought their support. This alliance, described by journalist Victoria Clark as allies for Armageddon, was driven by mutual interests. Israel sought American support for its security, while evangelicals believed their support would hasten the apocalypse. In the 1990s, Benjamin Netanyahu, then Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, saw the potential of this alliance. As prime minister, he strengthened these ties, bringing Christian Zionists to Israel and solidifying their unwavering support. This relationship has only grown stronger over the years, with evangelicals viewing their support for Israel as a divine mandate. Gog's army is described as immense, covering the land like a cloud. However, divine intervention is promised. God's wrath is unleashed through earthquakes, civil war among the invaders, pestilence, and catastrophic natural events like torrential rains, hailstones, fire, and sulfur. The Dead Sea Fault is identified as a potential catalyst for these events. The invading army is completely annihilated, with their bodies filling a vast valley renamed Valley of Hamongog. The Israelis are tasked with a seven-month cleanup process, burying the dead and cleansing the land. The weapons of war are to be burned as a symbolic purification. The entire ordeal is a pivotal moment for Israel, marking a turning point towards spiritual restoration. The world witnesses God's judgment and Israel's subsequent rededication. Don't forget to subscribe to MH History for more thrilling trends. Let's bring our attention to where these creatures might be hiding if not in Russia. Alexander's Gate is said to have been built by none other than Alexander the Great himself. This formidable structure was designed to imprison the uncivilized and barbaric Gog and Magog until the end of time. In medieval context, these two were no ordinary foes. They were allied with the armies of Satan, participating in the persecutions led by the Antichrist. Rabbi Eliyahu Amar, another expert on Jewish end-time prophecies, described the Gog and Magog War as a global conflict with deep spiritual meaning. He said, This will be a process towards the coming of the Messiah, where God will come and reveal His kingdom over Israel. Rabbi Pinchas Winston, known for his writings on end-time prophecies, noted the unprecedented nature of the recent Hamas attack, suggesting it could be a sign of the Gog and Magog prophecy. He wrote, the world is polarized like never before on every issue, divided essentially between the forces of good and the forces of evil. That is what the War of Gog and Magog is supposed to do. Have people self-identify whether they are for God or against God. John Hagee, a leading Christian Zionist pastor, has often linked Middle Eastern conflicts to the prophecy of Gog and Magog. He recently suggested that the current conflict might be part of God's plan, as described in the Bible. Hagee stated, For many Christian Zionists, their support for Israel is rooted in its role in the supposed end times, Jesus' return to earth, a bloody final battle at Armageddon, and Jesus ruling the world from the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Joel Rosenberg, an end times author, speculated that we might be in the early stages of the Gog and Magog War. In November, he outlined scenarios where Israel's recent military actions could either lead to a period of peace or signal the beginning of this prophesied war. Rosenberg commented, Scenario 2 is that we are in the early stages of Gog and Magog. 
I'm not saying that we are because things that aren't in the text are happening right now. Prophecy or not, one thing is for certain. Widespread bloodshed and the killing of thousands of people is never a permanent solution. While these conspiracies might seem like they align coincidentally, we may never know the truth till it reveals itself to us. So, is it really fair those families who were displaced, dismembered in their homes, and stripped of their identities just based on a prophecy that may or may not come true anytime soon? Let us know in the comments below. Follow M History for more conspiracies and trending news. Until next time.